let's talk drones. Now, I've got quite a few drones of two different types. A few of them are these. They are the commercial sort of off the shelf consumer drones that honestly take incredible video. If you're just doing drone photography or cinematography, these are pretty good. You can't go wrong with the DJI. This is my very first one I bought, a DJI Mavic Pro. Um, the more recent one I have, the uh, Mini Pro 3, is way better than this and about a third of the size. Um, and I swear it has a better camera than most cameras I own, like this one excluded, but pretty much beats the pants off anything else I have. And so if you just want to do video and film, that's great. I also want to play around with open source flight controllers though, and different payloads, different kinds of vision, ability to light things up or drop things, let's attach things to my multi-rotor. And that's where sort of building my own kits came in. Now this is my sort of main one. Uh, this started life as a off-the-shelf uh, F550 flame wheel kit. And if you're familiar, you can see it's been upgraded heavily. Um, it has new arms, it has new landing gear, it has a different flight controller in the center now. There's a Pixhawk 6X in there these days. It has a much better GPS than it came with. But crucially, there's one other thing about this drone that you may notice. And that is, it's had a rather unfortunate accident. Uh, about a week ago, this drone had a rapid unscheduled descent, as in it crashed and broke but not only this arm, this arm is obviously not supposed to be at a 45 degree angle, but also both of these interior frame layers are broken. And the problem is, this is a great kit. They don't make these anymore. DJI moved on to making these instead. And so I can't really buy the core kit anymore. Um, it's not just the core frame. Uh, one of, this motor here is completely ruined too. It makes an awful scratching sound when I rotate it. I'm pretty sure that's not good. But it's also the arms. Like these arms are aftermarket from a company I don't think even exists anymore. I bought them like eight years ago. And so I'm faced with the problem of like, I have a drone. I like the idea of it. I love the hexacopter setup specifically, though there are other good ones I wanna play with, but it's going to be hard to fix. I know I'm going to crash. The one thing I know about flying multi-rotors I've made myself is I know I'm going to crash. And it's a bad idea to have a drone where you know that you can't source parts for it when you crash it. And so specifically on this one, I want to, you know, given it's basically end of life now as a frame, take the frame, unman all the electronics and gear, put it up on the wall as posterity. This is the first drone ever built kind of by hand. And then repurpose most of the interior electronics, buy a few new motors, and make my own drone. And you know, I've spent some time browsing the internet, looking at different drone kits. There are some great ones out there. There are some very expensive ones out there. But all of them have pieces that are hard to replace. Like the best you can get is a frame that has carbon fiber arms where you're hoping the thing that breaks in a crash is just the carbon fiber tube and you can unscrew it and put a new tube in, sure. But a lot of them have much more pieces than that. I don't have to buy two frames or three frames or try and guarantee myself a supply of parts. And so I got to thinking, when the F550 kit comes to you, it doesn't come with aluminium arms, it comes with these. These are, I'm pretty sure, injection molded nylon arms. And while they are not metal or carbon fiber, they are pretty rigid, they're very hard to bend. The key thing about multi-rotor is that it is very rigid. You don't want to have any oscillation in it or the flight controller gets very unhappy. But these for plastic, I presume maybe there's some metal in there, but like they feel incredibly rigid. And so looking at this, I can see, you know, there's some good design in it. There's some good cross sort of patterning. It's pretty thick. There's some sort of decent pieces of the plastic design to give it lots of rigidity. I'm like, well, these days I can 3D print stuff like this. I can 3D print nylon even if that's the material that's best. And so my goal here is to try and make a new multi-rotor mostly using the pieces from this, maybe a few other components, but almost entirely 3D printed, as much as I can. Obviously, motors and propellers, I'm not 3D printing those, those are precisely made things. But all of the frame and landing gear and structural components, I want to try and 3D print. And so that's what you're gonna try and see me do over the next few videos here. Now, I'm probably gonna aim for maybe, maybe a hexacopter like this, though I wanted to try a, a Y6 configuration. Um, that is just three arms, one, two, three, with two propellers on each arm. Um, so I may try and do one of those. But before all that, 
I need to figure out how I'm going to make it. And specifically, if I am right, that plastic is a good enough material. So I'm going to go off, try and design a reasonable clone of this arm in Fusion 360, um, print it in a bunch of materials, and we will see how strong they are and see if they live up to the original. So let's go do that. After about 30 minutes in Fusion, I had a reasonable cloned model of the arm. Probably not quite as strong as the original, but good enough for relative testing. I printed the model in several different plastics so I could compare their strengths using a deflection test. First up, PLA. I'd never used this because it has a very low melting point, but it's a good base comparison. With a 1.5 kilogram weight on the end, it deflects 17 millimeters. Next, PETG. This has better thermal resistance, but it's generally more flexible, and you can see that here a full 20 millimeters of deflection. Next, ABS. I generally regard this as having decent mechanical properties, but it deflects 17 millimeters, just like the PLA. Polycarbonate is up next, and now we're getting into the expensive but stronger plastics, and we can see it does better at only 30 millimeters of deflection. Finally, nylon with glass fiber. This is, in theory, the same material as the original arm is made from, though with some weakness from being 3D printed rather than injection molded. And we can see that it does do the best of the bunch at only 10 millimeters of deflection. As a control, I also tried two others. The original DJI plastic arm, which has a deflection of nine millimeters, impressively close to my own design, and a carbon fiber rod, which deflects a mere four millimeters under the same one and a half kilogram weight load. It's not just about strength though, it's also about weight. I weighed all of these same prints, and of them, the ABS print was the lightest at 36 grams, with the nylon being second lightest at 38. The original frame arm is the heaviest, which is not that surprising as it's also a bit thicker than mine and has some metal inserts for the screws. Just to remind myself how good carbon fiber is, I also weighed the carbon fiber rod, which is over twice as long as all these test prints, and it was a mere 18 grams. There's a reason most people use it. With nylon being the pretty obvious filament choice in terms of strength and weight, I then moved on to some design testing. 3D printers have one advantage over injection molding, the complexity of designs they can do, and so I tried some different designs, all in PLA, as I just wanted a relative comparison. My first attempt to make it thinner but add thick sides didn't really work well at all, so I then moved on to adding a separate supporting lattice on the bottom. This worked well at a short length, and even better when extended to the full length of the arm. This PLA print only deflects 11 millimeters, almost half of what it did on the base design. And so it seems the answer is yes. You can in fact 3D print drone arms that are basically as strong as the original DJI injection molded ones. Now obviously some of these plastics aren't perfect, but I do think this uh, nylon mom with glass fiber is definitely strong enough to go forward with that. Now obviously I am going to make the few design changes you saw in the second set of tests, gonna add some reinforcement on the bottom and generally make a few other improvements to this um, with that potential uh, Y6 configuration I want to do. I need a motor on the top and the bottom, so I need to make this little mountain disc a little bit bigger to accommodate that. But essentially, take roughly this design, maybe shorten it, change it a bit, and then make some frame plates. Obviously, I'm gonna need to make uh, these plates here in the middle that join the frame together and some landing gear as well. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna design those, and then next time I'll come back and we'll look at what it takes to assemble and add the components to a 3D printed drone frame. So, see you then.